Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I am Arunita. I am a recent graduate of the Dog Lab, Isaac, Kolkata. Um, this is my uh, short talk. Uh, it's a gist of my dissertation work, which was a pattern analysis study on uh, free ranging dogs of India. Uh, so uh, I, I call this talk uh, Perfecting the Guessing Game. Um, now, uh, the context of my study is urban ecology here. Uh, urban ecology of India, where in cities, villages, uh, any sporadic human settlements, dogs are uh, everywhere. And they are also a species that we very closely uh, interact with. Uh, Dog-human interactions are a very commonplace thing in, in a setup like India. And my objective here with this study was to understand, uh, understand underlying patterns in the behavior of these street dogs, which we see uh, the whole time on the streets here. Mm my study outlines or at least attempts to outline the route from information to prediction so that we can uh, possibly make probability based uh, predictions uh, and design behavioral predictors for these animals uh, which we so closely interact with um, most of my phd life was spent uh, in front of a computer uh, tracking down these patterns, uh, trying to make sense of what is a mere coincidence and uh, what has got a reason behind it. And what I was essentially trying to do through my study was to understand um, how a dog thinks. So um, I will now briefly take you through uh, the chapters uh, of my thesis. Um, now, I firstly began with deconstructing behavioral patterns. Uh, measuring activity levels, uh, so resting times, foraging times, uh, mating seasons, when, when these activities peak for each of these behaviors, uh, at what times do we see certain behavioral displays? So this uh, composed my first chapter, which was uh, the natural history chapter. Now, uh, it is well known that behavior is a nonverbal communication scheme. So when we are talking of gestures um, or we are talking of body postures, uh, it's, it's, it's communicating uh, information and we see many kinds of these uh, gestural non-verbal uh, communication through behavior in multiple animal species. Um, so that brought me to the uh, next chapter, which was patterns and parallels. And I was looking for parallels with human languages, which is uh, our most primary um, way of communicating with each other. Now, um, as soon as we talk about parallels between language uh, and behavior, and we are trying to see uh, what similarities uh, exist and um, what are the differences, something that uh, was was uh, very stark was syntax. So by syntax, what I mean is grammar. Uh, now, grammar is something which is very intrinsic to any kind of communication system, uh, whether it's languages or uh, vocal language, or even if it is gestural communication, we do see evidence of syntax there of uh, grammar, which brings me to my third chapter, which is uh, behavioral grammar, where uh, I tried to decipher if there were language-like syntactic structures, grammatical structures within behavior. Now, um, behavior is not really a language. Animals lack language in an anthropomorphic sense, but there's this cognitive ability of number sense, which varies with uh, presence and absence of language. So systems uh, which do not have a proper language, many animal systems, uh, some tribal groups, they do not count their way. And this was something I used uh, as a cognitive test, uh, which brings me to my fourth uh, chapter here, sorry, uh, which was expression of number sense. So now going into the methods that I used for my study, very simplistic uh, methods and minimal methods, observational uh, notes, snapshots, video recordings, uh, analyzing these videos, uh, pausing them, looking at them multiple times, uh, getting information from them, and a few experimental trials for the uh, last chapter, which was a food choice test. For all of these uh, recordings that I was doing or information that I was collecting, I would uh, traverse a random road and every time I would see a dog, I would note down the date, time, location, and the behavioral display of that dog at that instance. So all of this gave me quite some amount of data. And eventually, I was able to uh, put together a time activity budget uh, of sorts, which is basically how the activity levels vary for these dogs throughout the day. Uh, and how do they spend their day? So what is the proportion in which they are uh, dividing uh, their day? And this was this is basically what we call as a time activity budget 
uh, in behavioral studies. The next thing was patterns. And uh, here's a very interesting thing that you see. You see on the right, you see a graph with uh, red and blue dots forming a pattern. The red dots are all the words from Romeo and Juliet, and the blue dots are all the proteins, uh, protein domains specifically, uh, uh, protein structures present in an yeast. And they form this rectangular hyperbola curve. And there's my graph uh, on the left side of the screen where dog behavior, uh, when each behavior is treated, say, as a word in a language, forms the same graph. Uh, we call these power law distributions and getting to know the mathematical trend of the patterns uh, that we were seeing really helped uh, to understand how it could be modeled further. So fun fact, a bunch of other things follow power law distributions, and it's a really interesting category of distributions to study and uh, analyze. Uh, there are factual trends as well in, this, uh, in these distributions, and I did see a few in my studies as well. Um, OK, now coming to grammar, where I had 10-minute videos, and I would pause them every five seconds and uh, take down the behavior which uh, it showed at that instance. It gave me a behavioral network of sorts. So this is. All connections, the network that you see on the left is all connections that each behavior has with others. So each dot is a behavior. What is happening after it, it goes, uh, there's one connection. The one happening after that is the next line uh, of grammar. And then there's the next one. Um, it's basically like a social network that we see on Facebook. So if you stalk somebody on Facebook, you can find out their close friend circle. So that is essentially what I was doing. I was trying to find out that if this is the behavior that I'm seeing, what are the other associated behaviors which I might just see after this or see just after that. Uh, and lastly, we had to check for uh, cognition. Um, so we gave them, uh, gave these dogs a food choice test with biscuit combinations and pieces of chicken salami combinations. And what we found was they really do weigh and they don't uh, really count. I'm not going into the details uh, of uh, this study, but it did prove as a test that behavior is not language, but it is like languages and it can be modeled like languages. Um, so now we had activity levels, we had the patterns, we had the grammar of behavior, and we did a test to see how it affects their daily life. All we had to do is put this together. And um, that is when, uh, you know, information theory uh, comes in. And I did not, uh, of course, continue into the theoretical aspect of this. But being a behavioral biologist, uh, my study brings it to a point where we can use this information to build AI powered behavioral predictors for dogs uh, for a system that we so closely associate with. Um, essentially, what I mean is that if we know the activity levels uh, of, of these animals over the day, we know the frequency distribution, we know the sequence in which these behaviors are occurring, we can use this to predict, uh, say, what a sleeping dog would be doing next, or at this time of the day, what a barking dog would be doing next. Um, the elegance of the study is that uh, it can be replicated on any model system, but even from a very dog behavior perspective, it provides a very strong baseline for behavioral research in dogs. Uh, we can me measure levels of um, any specific behavior. Uh, when do we see more of this? When do we see uh, more of a different behavior? We can even plan behavioral research with a dog's routine in mind. We can customize it for sterilized and non-sterilized animals. Uh, when I measured uh, the activity levels and figured out the proportion of uh, time these dogs spend in different behaviors, I checked it for both sterilized and non-sterilized animals. So uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, given that uh, this is a model system which is so close to us, it makes sense to try it out with this uh, model system. Um, there are pets, uh, there are children playing with dogs in the streets, people giving them food. Um, now, because this is a presentation about my thesis, this is a list of uh, the manuscripts and publications from this. And that's it. Uh, thank you. And I'm really thankful uh, to Dr. Oindita Bhadra, who is my supervisor, and Jitin, who was my mentor for the talk.